to order. First order of business is roll call. James Miller. Here. Thomas Silvera. Absent. Eric Curtin. Absent. Stephen Hutler. Present. Judith Rosenthal. Here. Mark Donahue. Absent. Anton Viveros. Absent. And Tom Heaney. Present. Next order of business would be the adoption of minutes, but we don't have those in our files, so we're going to continue that to the next meeting. Uh, at this point, we're going to read through the petitions to uh, find out who's here ready to go forward. I will point out that it, we're going to take a hard stop at 7.30, and uh, we're going to have a, a changing of the guard on the board. Mr. Hudler is going to be leaving early, and Mr. Curtin is going to be replacing him. So. Uh, I've got to be conscious of that as we go through the calendar that I don't have somebody mid, mid uh, case. case. So if, if we go a little bit out of order tonight, it's just so that we can keep everyone on track. So Mr. Heaney, if you could read the first petition. Petition of Prescott Point Investor, Zero West Main Road for a special use and a variance. That's going to be continued to the July 25th meeting per August, August 22nd. Wow. Your orange paper is wrong. <laughs> August 22nd. Thank you. That's for the first two. The next petition. Petition of Newport County Regional YMCA, 792 Valley Road. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mr. Silva. Petition of Raymond Paul Penault Jr. at 210 Purgatory. Uh, that may be continued to the August meeting. Okay. 822. You say May. What? Uh, yeah, the t continue. It was every, uh, Mr. Lynch requested a continuance uh, on behalf of his client to July, but my client is actually is out of state, so I'm, I'm asking okay. that it be continued to August 22. Sounds good. Petition of GG Properties LLC 72 Johnny Cake Hill Road. Uh, that's ready. Okay. Petition of Frank P. Fetchner, 576 Tuckerman Avenue. That's uh, scheduled to be continued to the 25th, correct? Yes. Uh, that's July 25th, yes. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Costa. DCE Development Incorporated, 499 East Main Road. And that, that's to continue to the 25th? That's also continued to, for the, well, to July. <coughs> Petition of David and Karen Dill, 141 Busher Drive. You ready to go forward? That's yes, sir, we are. Okay, thank you. Petition of Charles and Bonnie Cos Cosball, I believe, at ready? Uh, 51 Austin there. Thank you. Petition of Andrew and Julie Nicoletti at 7 South Crest Street. Okay, good. Petition of 48 VRM LLC, 48 Valley Road. That's ready. Thank you. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to read two petitions into the record. They're, co they're considered summary petitions. A summary petition is one that has less than 25% of a variance in one, one less than 25? 50% of one dimensional variance. Yeah, 50% of one dimensional variance. And we're going to read them in and ask if there's anyone here that's t here to oppose them. If they're not, we're going to hear them as a summary, which means we're just going to read them in and then take a vote. So, Mr. Heaney, if you can read the first one. Petition of David and Karen Dill owners for a variance from section 603, dimensional regulation, 903 variance, and 321 summary hearing to construct a five foot by 10 foot porch resulting in a 21 foot eight inch setback where 25 feet is required. Said real estate is located at 141 Busher Drive and further identified as lot 6622 on tax assessor's plat 111. Is there anyone here tonight uh, to express their opposition to this petition? Seeing them, we're going to keep that as a, con as a summary petition. Could you read the second one, Mr. Heaney? 
petition of Charles and Bonnie Cosball, owners for a variance from section 603, 701, 803G, 321 to construct a front porch stairs resulting in a 16 foot setback where 25 feet is required. Said real estate is located at 51 Alston Ave and further identified as lot 234 on tax assessor's plat 115 Southeast. Is there anyone here exp express a opposition to this p petition? Seeing none, we're gonna hold it as, as a summary. Uh, could I have a, a motion to accept the summary petitions as presented? So moved. Do I have a second? I'll second. Motion made and second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries 4 0. Thank you. Petition of the Newport County Regional YMCA owner, Robert M. Silva, Esquire Attorney, for a special use section 605B1 to allow the footprint of the existing facility to exceed the maximum allowable footprint of 35,000 square feet by the construction of a daycare center containing 4,196 square feet. That real estate is located at 792 Valley Road and further identified as lot one on tax assessor's plat 115. Good evening, Mr. Silva. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> members of the board. For the record, uh, Robert M. Silva uh, with the firm of Silva, Thomas, Motlin, and Offenberg uh, in Middletown, Rhode Island. Uh, I've been before this honorable body in the past on this matter, YMCA. Uh, if you'll remember, uh, we were required to get a special use permit uh, to create the uh, renovated, improved YMCA itself because the original building was in excess of 35,000 square feet. So when we added the racquetball course, I mean the uh, squash courts and we moved the racquetball courts, we needed that permission. And we went through uh, the full planning board uh, process with a technical review committee, uh, as well as uh, a full planning board positive recommendation for us to do that. Uh, this evening, we're back at the same site uh, and uh, there are plans that have been filed showing a simple bump out on the south side of the existing Y toward the hotel facility to the south, there's a 4,000 plus square foot addition uh, which will be dedicated and used for the daycare program. Currently the day daycare program is within the main building itself, but the demand for daycare is so great that we have to expand to accommodate the needs of the membership. So uh, we designed uh, the bump out, and I have with me uh, tonight uh, witnesses that will testify to the appropriateness of the relief that is being requested. Uh, the planning board itself and the technical review committee uh, went through its uh, customary and required review, and I believe uh, the zoning board has received uh, a letter of June 20th of 2023 uh, from uh, Mr. Uh, Paul Croce, the chair of the planning board, uh, with a recommendation to this board uh, that the uh, proposal should be approved and receive favorable approval. Uh, it also indicates that there are a number of technical waivers under section 521 uh, of the uh, rules and regulations of the planning board, uh, which the planning board uh, has adopted uh, and sent to you with a recommendation that you as the final decider should grant the waivers as well as the petition for special use permit. Uh, there is a one 
document that I would ask you make part of the record if it hasn't been done so. And that is a letter from uh, our engineer, Michael Russell, uh, dated uh, uh, June 16th uh, to the town of Middletown in connection with this special use permit, explaining that with respect to one of the recommendations of the planning board, he has not been able to accommodate that request and he'll explain the reasons why. But if you make that a part of the record, that would be greatly appreciated. So tonight I have uh, uh, from our architects, uh, <clears throat> uh, Jeff Kaplan, uh, he will just show you uh, renderings as to what this will look like. Uh, Mr. Russell, the engineer, will describe the site plan and the elevation issues and the design of the bump out as well as the parking area as modified and proposed to accommodate uh, the mothers and fathers and parents that come in and drop their children in the turnaround, uh, which is in existence and is a already a curb cut on Valley Road. So there will be no additional entrances. There will just be an upgrade, significant upgrade, with additional parking at that location. And uh, then I also have uh, Nathan Godfrey. He has a complete report, which I'll ask him to distribute uh, to the, uh, the board. And if need be, he'll give you a short rendition uh, of what the report says, uh, because uh, we need to uh, uh, make uh, uh, reference to and submit proof that we're in keeping with the comprehensive community plan, uh, et cetera, and there won't be any adverse impact uh, to the values of properties in the surrounding area. Uh, and I also have Pam Rogers uh, with me uh, who prepared uh, the uh, landscaping plan. And we <clears throat> modified that a couple of times uh, because uh, with uh, great pride, Mike Miller, the CEO, who's also here with me tonight, indicates that there was a significant grant made available um, by uh, a foundation that uh, tripled the amount of the budget for landscaping. So Pam was allowed to go back to the drawing boards and come up with a very extensive uh, landscape plan, uh, which we presented to the Tree Commission. Uh, and they had a site visit, and they were very, very uh, thrilled as to the amount of landscaping that will in fact be installed. I note that some of it has started already and it's already made a difference, but it's not complete. Uh, so if you have any questions on the landscaping plan, Pam would be here to describe it in detail. So if I could, I'd like to uh, swear in and ask uh, uh, <coughs> Jeff Kaplan from the uh, architectural firm that has designed the building uh, to make a presentation. Okay, very good. Mr. Kaplan, raise your right hand, please. You swear the testimony this evening to the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. State your name and address for the record. Jeff Kaplan, 26 Salisbury Road, Barrington, Rhode Island, 02806. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Silva, it's all yours. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kaplan, you've been engaged by the YMCA to design uh, the additional bump out for the child care. Yes, I have. And I just submitted to the board uh, renderings, uh, elevations, uh, floor plan in connection with the same, and I asked that it be made an exhibit. And yes, we're marking that exhibit A for the record. Kaplan, uh, would you go ahead and describe the work that's being done on the design that you uh, offered this evening? Uh, yes, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I'd like to call your attention to the uh, center drawing, the key plan, um, which is basically an overall 
plan of the entire facility. As you can see on the right hand side, there's a gray area which shows the um, existing um, daycare area. And to the right of that, there's another hatched area that shows the uh, expansion of the, um, of to, to the daycare area. Um, then I now I'd like to call your attention to the, um, the elevation along the bottom of the, of the, f of the drawing, um, which basically to the right of the, on the right side of the drawing shows the daycare area. What we planned on doing is basically lowering the um, scale of the building um, and, to turn, and incorporate some sloped roofs uh, to kind of create a little bit of a schoolhouse effect that you can kind of see in the rendering that's right above the elevation. Um, we also plan on, as far as materials go, um, use the materials that are on the existing building right now, which is clapboard siding and the brick and aluminum windows. Uh, as for the daycare itself, um, as you can see in the plan in the upper left hand corner, um, the, as you walk in the front door, the front vestibule, there will be a large um, play area with a reception area and basically seven classrooms. There will be two for uh, infants, two for toddlers, and th three for pre-K for a total of, a pr of 94 kids maximum. Uh, the uh, materials uh, that are being used for this uh, extension uh, are the same that were allowed by this board and the planning board for the main building itself. Yes, they will be the same materials, basically uh, fiber cement lap siding, uh, brick, and um, aluminum storefront windows. And uh, the window treatment will be the same, and it will carry out the existing treatment in the existing building. Yes, it will. I have no further questions. Any questions for the architect? <clears throat> I just wanted to ask you, Mr. Kaplan. I see one of the waivers relates to uh, the, the windows, where you're supposed to have between 20 and 60 percent of the wall space um, that's facing the public right-of-way be windows and this is less than 20 percent. What was the uh, rationale for um, going <coughs> over 20 percent? Um, the rationale for going, I believe, I'm a little confused with that myself. I believe based on the um, letter that was submitted for the waiver, I believe we were 21 20.6% or 21.6%. Yeah. yeah, so we were within, uh, within the guidelines. Well, I'm looking at the letter from the um, planning board that Mr. Silver referred us to, and the first w uh, waiver that's proposed to be granted addresses windows occupy the requirement of section 521.2.2B1 Windows occupy between 20 and 60 percent of the facade visible from the public way. Windows make up less than 20 percent of the street. Is, is it your testimony that you've changed that and you're over it now? Sorry? Is it your testimony? I heard the number 21 percent. Is it, is it your testimony that you're now within that range? We are. We are. Okay. Oh, this, oh. We didn't change the request for the original plans and the waiver. We are out within that 20 to 60 percent of the facade visible from the public way. Uh, the issue that was raised on windows at the planning board level was the next uh, request for a variance, or I should say, a waiver. waiver. The proposed windows were not divided alike to the design. And the reason that they are not is because to put those divided light windows on this addition would be contrary to all the windows that have already been installed uh, on the main building. So we're keeping the same effective architectural treatment windows on the addition as has been approved in the past for the waiver. Okay, thank you. Any other questions?
questions for Mr. Pett? Yeah, in the, in the uh, original presentation that I read in, it mentions that the total square feet of the building was 35,000 square feet. And then it mentioned the daycare center is 4196. So is that mean, does that mean the total is 39? Or is it somewhere less than that because you didn't use up the 35,000 square feet that you had for the original building? Numbers would like to be confirmed by <coughs> Mr. Russell. We can wait for him, that's fine. We'll wait for him then. Yep. We'll finish with the architect. Any other questions for the architect? My recollection, Mr. Heaney, is that the original YMCA, which was non-conforming, was beyond 35,000 square feet. When we came in and added the squash courts and other aspects of the building as it presently exists, that was in addition to the 35,000 square feet, so we needed a special use. Now to the extent that this 4,000 square foot <coughs> additional addition is being asked, we're still beyond the 35,000, so it's the same relief we're asking for in the same section of the ordinance yeah. as we did in the past. Yeah, I just, I couldn't find all of those numbers added together to say the proposed facility with all these changes is X, Square feet. I didn't see that anywhere. So if you've got that, that's all I want to know. I think Mike can uh, come up with those. those okay. Numbers. Thank you, Mr. Pets. I think we're good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> if uh, I could present to Mr. Godfrey, and I'd like to s distribute his report. That's going to be marked Exhibit B. Mr. Godfrey, raise your right hand. Do you swear that testimony this evening will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. State your name and address for the record. Nathan Godfrey. I'm the managing uh, member and principal of Newport Appraisal Group, 221 3rd Street in Newport. Mr. Godfrey, did the YMCA engage your services uh, to review the pending application for the daycare center uh, and in connection with the pending request for special use permit? Did you prepare a report which I just submitted? And it's the second report which <coughs> updates the first that was submitted quite some time ago. They did make that contact. The first report was uh, submitted, I believe, in January. Uh, this has been updated to reflect the uh, most current uh, planning board recommendation. And I gave you four fresh pictures in the back and tweaked a couple minor spots as necessary. Could you uh, share with the board uh, the uh, findings that you uh, uh, made and the conclusions that you uh, re reached. Sure. Uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, I have told you this before, but I view special use permits as a before and after scenario. What exists before, if you were to grant the permit and it were acted upon, uh, what would exist after? Uh, you start with uh, the YMCA, you add the component of the daycare that you're after, um, as I've thought about it, uh, from a land use perspective, I can't think of a more complementary use that's not there. Uh, I went up to the, the Kent County Y and the South County Y, and I think I can report to you, you, you have the best YMCA in the state at this point. It's, it's really <coughs> something special. Uh, not that those other Ys need to be diminished, but... Uh, the Newport County YMCA in Middletown's really fortunate to uh, have what they got. Um, so from a land use perspective, the, the addition of the daycare is, is completely complementary to what exists. I can tell you it's necessary throughout. 
of Middletown and Newport County. There's real demand for it. Um, the, uh, the COVID pandemic forced the closure of a couple that couldn't open back up. They lost their help. Uh, there's real demand there on that side. Uh, so the after scenario, I believe, is a very complementary, consistent use with what you're looking for. Your, uh, your comp plan addresses the why twice. That's in the report. When you look at your special use permits, it's a five-step criteria. The first being will not result in a significant diminution of property values. I think your surrounding properties are the ones that will use a daycare facility right there will not create a nuisance in the neighborhood. I can't imagine a daycare creating a nuisance. Will be compatible with the comp plan. Uh, you, you, I've referenced two spots in the plan. An expansion of the Y, I think, is very consistent with the comp plan. The granting of such a special use permit will not be detrimental or to or substantially or permanently injure the appropriate use of the surrounding area district. We can check that box. The granting of a special use permit will not result in hazardous conditions, et cetera. Uh, there's not a daycare use out there when run appropriately that's gonna create any such hazardous conditions. Uh, I believe it's met the criteria. Um, I, I'm really thrilled that, that it's located here. It's a real asset to the community. Thank you, Mr. Any questions? Thank you. I'd like to present uh, Michael Russell, professional engineer, uh, who was uh, assisted with the design of the entire Y, and now he's assisted us with the design of the day daycare bump out, so called. Good evening, Mr. Russell. Can you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear the testimony this evening will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. State your name and address for the record. Mike Russell, 207 High Point Avenue, Portsmouth, Rhode Island. And Mr. Russell, you've appeared before us on numerous occasions, so we're going to accept you as an expert witness. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mike, you were engaged uh, by the YMCA uh, to design the original uh, renovation and upgrade of the Y itself. Is that correct? That's correct. And you were further engaged uh, by the Y to continue your work and to look at the present site uh, for the bump out of the child care center. Is that correct? That is correct. And could you describe that site, uh, its peculiar uh, circumstances uh, and its uh, challenges, if you will, uh, and uh, describe what the design was that we presented to the planning board and received a favorable approval? Certainly. Uh, so uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, I think Mr. Silva gave a, a very good uh, general outline overview of this project. Uh, the daycare phase, as we informally refer to it, is on the south side of the property. It's really independent of what's already been done at the Y, other than the adding to the square footage of the building. So if I may, Mr. Chairman, there was a question, or Mr. Heaney, there was a question about that square footage. So originally, uh, in phase one, we'll call it, conformally call it, uh, there was a special use permit application. One of the triggers was the square footage of the building being in over 35,000 square feet. That was uh, approximately 52,000 square feet. Uh, this addition is roughly 5,000 square feet, which brings the total up to 58,000 square feet. Uh, so it's a, it's a, by comparison, it's a, it's a modest modification to the building. Uh, there is, uh, as Mr. Silva indicated, we're going to utilize the existing driveway or curb cut on Valley Road. It will just be improved. That turnaround that ex exists there now will be improved, and we are going to add uh, 11 parking spaces there. Uh, in support of that, uh, there is. Uh, stormwater management facility that will be integrated into the playground area. There's an existing stormwater practice there that will be improved, approved, uh, improved. Uh, we had gone to Rhode Island DEM uh, for a uh, application uh, for stormwater, RIPTES, and that was approved uh, as a modification to the original permit. We also went to Rhode Island DOT for a modification to that original permit. That was approved. 
Technical Review Committee, uh, gave it a positive, positive recommendation to the Planning Board, and as you've heard, the Planning Board gave a positive recommendation to the Zoning Board. Uh, one of the, as Mr. Silva outlined, uh, some of the recommendations and conditions, one that was uh, specifically mentioned was the, the, and I believe you have not only a letter but an exhibit in your packet in support of that letter. Uh, they had a concern about one of the parking spaces, the handicapped space nearest the building and uh, uh, drop-off area, hardscape area. They wanted us to consider angled parking there uh, to, to facilitate that. We said that we considered it. We would further investigated that, and that option was not really feasible. Uh, and it also resulted in the loss of four additional parking spaces, which the YMCA can't afford. So we kind of took the pencil to the paper and, and reworked that. And as you see in that exhibit, the handicap space we better align that with the building and the sidewalk drop-off area. And what you s also see in there is we have some software that can analyze turning movements of vehicles so you can see that that car can easily negotiate that, that maneuver and, and exit the, uh, the property to Valley Road. <coughs> That's it, yeah. Does that also include the emergency vehicle concern? Was that part of that equation? Right. So during the technical review committee uh, meeting, the fire department uh, wanted 360-degree uh, <coughs> access around that turnaround. We had to make uh, a slight modification to that to, to uh, ensure that that maneuver could be made. And that was presented to the board, planning board, and to the TRC with approval.
questions for Mr. Russell? <clears throat> Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. <clears throat> Finally, not to prolong things, uh, I do have uh, Pam Rogers, uh, who would be more than. Which one was it that you had come on about? The Van Buren Foundation. They had given us an initial grant for landscaping and then came out and looked at the plan and said, we want to improve that by another million dollars. Yeah. So 350000 in landscape. But Pam's here if there's any question on that. I, it I wasn't at the planning question. board level. I think I think we're good, Mr. Silva. Do you have any other witnesses? None whatsoever. I would commend the petition to your consideration. I'm going to ask if there's anyone in the public that would like to speak either for or against the petition. Seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing. The first thing I'm going to ask for from my board is uh, a recommendation or a motion that we approve the Planning department's recommend the planning board's recommendations as outlined in the September the June twentieth memo that we received. Mr. Chairman, I move to um, approve and grant the special use permit um, subject to the conditions laid out by the planning commission in its letter. And, um, and that we specifically approve the five uh, requested waivers. Thank you, Mr. Adler. Do I have a second? I'll second. Made and second. Discussion? Oh, I just want to say for the record, I do believe this application meets the five criteria for granting of a special use permit under our ordinance in Middletown as testified by Mr. Godfrey. I do believe there will be no diminution of property values in the surrounding area. There is certainly no nuisance created here. I believe it is compatible with the comp plan. I don't believe it will injure adjoining uh, property uses, and I don't believe it will create a hazardous or unhealthy condition. Thank you, Mr. Hedder. Any, any other discussion? I'd just like to add that the overall renovation, both phases one and two, is providing a service to the community that is greatly needed and this is in my opinion a very necessary and, and important uh, improvement for the good of the community and it, as was mentioned it meets all five special use criteria plus it's uh, use for the community so which I think is really important I would just say that I agree with my colleagues I concur all those in favor Aye. Aye. Motion carries 4 0. Thank, Thank you, you Mr. Silva. Much. Appreciate your consideration. Yep, 72 John Clark. Petition of GG Properties LLC owners and David P. Martlin Esquire attorney for a PBR vote section 521 article 5 special use section 602 to construct a 1500 square foot building to be used for storage warehousing and associated office space. That real estate is located at 72 Johnny Cake Hill Road and further identified as lot 601 on tax assessor's plat 114. Uh, yes, good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman. It was just 15,000 square feet. What did I say? 1,500. Oh, I'm sorry, 15,000 square feet. It's a much bigger building. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Martland. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. David Martland on behalf of uh, the owner and applicant, GG Properties. LLC. Um, the, the property that is uh, the subject of this petition is located at 72 Johnny Cake Hill Road. 
Um, there exists a building presently on premises. Uh, it's uh, it's known as the the Avid Building. It has um, that as a, a tenant in there, and uh, uh, my client acquired this property last year, and he's uh, looking to build a, a second building on this property that is in in the uh, toward the rear of the property behind the existing Avid Building. Uh, the, the use of that building will ha have uh, warehousing and some associated office space in that. Uh, the, we've gone through the process, the development plan review process, met with the technical review committee and the, the planning board. Uh, during that process, uh, there was an abutter um, located at uh, 12 Julia Court. They were represented by Mr. Lynch. Um, who had uh, interposed an objection um, uh, at that point, um, in large measure relative to the um, uh, aesthetics of the, the building. Um, and uh, so at that time of the initial application, there was a, uh, the, the building had a standing seam metal roof uh, at the request of um, uh, the applicant that was, or the, the abutter, that has been changed to um, uh, an asphalt uh, roof shingle, architectural roof shingle. Also, they uh, requested to have windows um, installed on the north facade. Um, and uh, so that has been proposed uh, to, to soften that facade. They have since uh, withdrawn uh, any application uh, or any uh, objection to this application. I do have uh, revised renderings that I will pass out to the board. Certainly. We're going to mark this Exhibit A. And I can have uh, Dan Herc walk, uh, Dan uh, Herc and Walter, uh, go through those um, in his testimony. But there was to, really the, the changes to the roof, the, the windows um, on the north side, um, as well as uh, some of that siding. So we had um, went through the, uh, the development plan review process with the planning board. Uh, the planning board uh, voted 7-0 uh, uh, unanimously to forward a positive recommendation uh, to this board with uh, certain requested uh, waivers um, as well as their findings um, uh, under the development plan review prep. Is that the letter dated uh, 310? Yes. Do you have copies for the for the record? I did bring. If you if you have them, bring them because I, I don't think they have them. So okay. We'll just mark that exhibit B just to highlight it. Thank you, Mr. Martin. So uh, with me tonight, I do have uh, Matt Goldsmith, who uh, is, is the property owner, uh, Michael Russell, who is the engineer, uh, Dan Herkenrother, the um, uh, architect, as well as James Cool, uh, a real estate uh, consultant who is uh, prepared to testify uh, on uh, compliance with the comprehensive plan. Uh, 
and uh, the other elements for a special use permit. Uh, with that, I so think. Mr. I'm Martin, just, this is allowed by right in the zone with a special use permit. Am I correct? That, that is correct. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I understood. Yes. Yeah, and, and interestingly, um, the, the office park des designation is referenced in the, the comp plan, and I know Jim will get into this. Uh, specifically says the, the office park is really a blending of two districts. One, the light industrial district, and two, the office business district. So in the light industrial district, um, this use is permitted by right. In the straight office business district, it's not permitted. But in the office park, it's permitted by a special use permit. And in fact, you know, you, the forerunner of the office park was you know, the, the industrial park. Um, and so you did have significant um, warehousing associated with uh, many of the manufacturing types of businesses that had been um, uh, located uh, in there. Um, with that, I think I'd like to um, ask uh, Mike Russell to come up to uh, walk through uh, the plans and also so we can run through some of the uh, waiver requests uh, that were granted by the planning board. Rep um, you're, you're still sworn in, so you're still sworn in, so you can just talk away. Michael, if you can sort of uh, briefly describe the existing conditions as well as the proposed conditions uh, to the board. Certainly, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board, Mike Russell. Speak into the mic so they can. Certainly, Mr. Chairman, uh, good evening, Mike Russell, uh, uh, on behalf of the applicant. So as, as Mr. Martland uh, indicated in his introduction, there is, there's currently a, a facility there. Uh, this application proposes a 15,000 square foot standalone building to the rear of that building. They're gonna utilize the existing access to the site uh, uh, and improve it very slightly. Now, there's a modest increase uh, in paved areas. Uh, the majority of the improvements are associated with the building, apart from the building, uh, are some infrastructure, namely stormwater management, that will take handle the roof area. This had to go to Rhode Island DEM for a stormwater permit that was reviewed and approved, permit issued. Uh, that was obtained before we went to the planning board for development plan review. But uh, essentially, uh, for, for those of you that are familiar with the site, maybe not the rear of the site, uh, there's a, uh, as Johnny Cake Hill Road climbs up towards Equidnick Avenue, uh, there's a comparable slope in the rear of this property from east to west, or from, from the western boundary up to the eastern boundary. Uh, this building will essentially match in to the highest pavement edge there with a slight modification to make that the floor or slab elevation of the building and it's cut into the hill and then it will just be filled around it. So the actual height of the building, if you're standing on the property to the right going up the hill, this building will seem very, very low. Uh, as you're standing to the property to the left, it might appear very high. Um, but uh, uh, Mr. Herkenrother can certainly describe the interior of the building. Mr. Mr. Uh, Marland uh, described briefly the exterior of the building. But with respect to the to the uh, waiver request with the planning board as part of the development plan review, apart from and I'll let Mr. Herkenrother get into the building waivers that were requested. But apart from that, they were uh, they were related to uh, a redevelopment. Uh, of the property. As I've said many times, the commercial design standards are really meant for ground up projects and we're gonna have, talk about one here in a minute uh, after this project, but uh, redevelopment projects, it's a, the, you know, it's a tricky fit. So you can comply with most of them, some of them uh, you cannot, you know. So for example, one of the waiver requests is you need a 10 foot buffer around the perimeter of the building that consists of a combination of hardscape and landscape. Well, the building is going to abut the existing pavement. So just on that edge alone, you cannot achieve a landscape strip because you need to access the roll-up doors. 
So that, that, that is a, a prime example of what I'm referring to. Um, but um, um, there's also the, the, uh, the waiver for a landscape buffer along the, the western property line. Uh, again, it's a it's a it's a an existing condition. The the existing pavement line, it, we're going to hold that because there's existing parking to serve the current facility, and also serve the new facility, and that edge of pavement to that property line is less than 10 feet. So it's a, so it's an existing condition that we're looking to maintain. Uh, we're also seeking a waiver um, with respect to. Sidewalks and crosswalks through the interior of the site. Right, due to, due to the nature of the business, um, uh, the applicant felt that that was not uh, not a uh, an appropriate site improvement for what's being done there. Certainly, uh, there's no sidewalk network in the park. That's what I, I didn't I didn't believe there was. Yeah, as it is, so um, we we therefore we requested the waiver. Yeah, I mean the the planning board undertook a site visit. They actually looked at the site and um, they recommended approval of that waiver. That's correct. Um, and with respect to the parking lot trees, deciduous trees, those were all existing conditions as well? Correct. And there is significant landscaping to the rear of the site? Yes, yes there is. And um, much of that is being maintained? Correct. And that uh, would provide a buffer to the abutting nursing home facility as well as the, the residences? That's correct. Well, excuse me, will the property be visible from Julia Court? Yes. It's, a, it's visible now. You, you mean will the building be visible? Yes, this building. Yes. I mean that... Um, well, from Julia Court, down, there, there, there are there. houses there presently. Right. And then the building is down. Right, I understand. And you referenced the original objector from Julia Court to the appearance of the building. So I just want to confirm that residents on Julia Court will see it in their sort of backyard. Well, I think what Mr. Marlin was referring to and what you just mentioned was appearance of the building. I, I, I think you asked me, could you see it? Right. See the yes, you could. You, I mean, that's that street is approximately 25 feet higher than this property, so you you are looking down on it. So you, you, I guess, to answer the question in a in a broader sense, you can see everything <laughs> to your to in that direction. Okay. Basically, looking down on the roof. You, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I, I wanted to know that. I'm going to ask further questions. I do have uh, serious concerns about what is a, what looks to me like a, a very industrial building of a garage in the premier office park in Middletown. And so I do have significant questions regarding compatibility. This is more for Mr. Martlin, I'm sorry compatibility with the uh, comprehensive plan and also for Mr. Hool, I'm going to want to talk about diminution and value of surrounding properties because I don't think this is a, a favorable development for a Quinnick corporate park based on its use and its appearance. It's like a farm building. But I guess I would ask you this question. Have you made that determination or you have questions in no, that regard? I, I certainly lean in that um, direction. I did do my own site visit and, um, <coughs> and so I was not surprised to hear about um, Julia Court. But I try to um, be open-minded and hear the testimony and so I'm telling you all what I'm hoping to hear from the expert witnesses on these issues that are a significant concern to me. Well, I think from a building design standpoint, um, you, you referenced the appearance of the building. It, it actually meets, from that Julia Court side, all of the requirements of the commercial design regulations. The slope of the roof, the material that's being implemented, 
on that north side that faces Julia Court. It's been changed to have a board and batten look. Um, it, so it, it has uh, the, the appearance of wood. The, the waiver is associated with the material being the fiber cement board, which is typically uh, granted as long as you have that traditional building uh, material look. Uh, the uh, windows were added uh, to, um, to meet the requirements um, for uh, the, the appropriate architecture. So from, from that standpoint, it meets all those commercial design standards. Um, building really isn't visible from Johnny Cake or the other facades. It's kind of behind the other building, but you know, you've got garage doors on the side of the building, not the, the, the front. To access that, right, right. So I'm, um, I, I, ha I haven't made up my mind. Okay. I'm laying out for you the concerns that I, I appreciate have, that, and hopefully we can address them um, further. Okay. So just for a point of clarification, you just mentioned the win windows, which is also one of the waivers. But you're saying now, based on the concessions that you've already made, you've already addressed that, and no longer need that waiver. Is that correct? I, I said with respect to the uh, the facade facing right. Julia Court, that is uh, that is correct. There there was a uh, a recommended condition. Wait. Uh, number six. Yep. Prior to permitting the north facade building elevation plan should be revised to provide at least. 20% of the facade to be made up of windows. It actually exceeds that. Um, and then if a further request from the abutter was made to add some additional windows on, so that there were two uh, uh, rows of windows, uh, so that, that, that was put Good. in. And that's what I'm trying to get at. So you've, you've made those accommodations already. That is correct. The, now, on, I'll, I'll say the front of the building, that faces Johnny Cake, but is behind Avid. Uh, we we don't have that, and that's where we're requesting. Okay. You know that waiver; it's not visible. Yep. Gotcha. I don't know if the board has any more questions. Any other for questions Russell? for Mr. Russell? I think we're good, Mr. Martland. I think it might be an appropriate time to bring up the architect. Okay. Raise your right hand. Do you swear the testimony this evening will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. State your name and address for the record. Daniel Herkenrother, Herkworks Architecture in 36 Aquidneck Avenue, Middletown. Thank you. Yes, Dan, could you... Uh, Please maybe just walk through the uh, the elevations um, and what was being employed uh, with respect to the, the proposed structure. Uh, yes, so there's uh, this building is a bit different because most of the interest is on the back of the building, which faces the neighbors. Um, a lot of the design standards they reference visible from the public right of way, and this building is about 300 feet back away from the public right of way and it's also behind the Avid building. So the actual front elevation, which is the south elevation, is not visible from the public right of way. So we just have a, a, a solid wall there because it faces the back of the Avid building. Um, on the east side, it's only about eight or ten feet high because of our grade is so high there. We have a series of windows on that side. And then as we mentioned before, the north elevation, which is actually the back, is the one we've dressed up with the windows and uh, improved the materials to meet the design standards. And those have been from direct recommendations from the neighbors. Um, we've actually discussed that you can only see this north elevation from their backyards or their houses from the public right of way on their street. It's actually not visible. So you actually have to come off the book right away and it's actually from their yards or houses you would see this north elevation of the building. Now the, the, the roof pitch, that is a requirement of the, uh, 
commercial design standards, is that right? Yes, we are required to have it as a 412 pitch. Uh, it could have been made lower and not as high, but that was the standard we had to follow. And uh, the, the originally the material was gonna be a standing seam metal roof, is that correct? Yes, we changed the material for the roof to asphalt shingles and we changed all of the exterior siding to be a board and batten as per the suggestion from the neighbors. And that is to resemble the traditional wood type of facade, is that correct? That's correct, that's a traditional material. You're requesting a waiver just because it's made out of uh, synthetic materials, is that right? Yes, correct. I don't have any further questions. Any questions for us? Um, Dan, what is the proposed uh, use of the property? Uh, warehouse space. I do have uh, Mr. Goldsmith uh, with me this evening, and uh, I can have him come up to speak to some of that. Why don't we do that? Because I'd, I'd like to know that too. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Raise your right hand. Do you swear the testimony this evening will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. State your name and address for the record. I'm Matthew Goldsmith, 604 Thames Street, Newport. Okay, great. Go ahead, Mr. Hudner, ask your question. If I could, uh, yep. could ask some questions. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Uh, yes, uh, could you um, explain uh, the, the current status of the property? Uh, sure. Board? The, uh, I purchased the property with the existing building. Um, it's currently occupied by Avid Technologies, which uses it as a warehouse. Uh, there is office space in there as well. Uh, the office space represents approximately 25% of the building space. Uh, and the intent uh, with the new building was to keep those ratios quite similar. Um, just so happens that we need the same, relatively the same amount of office space that Avid does. So the, the two buildings are quite similar in terms of the ratios of office space to warehouse space. Uh, and uh, that was, uh, Really, the intent was to keep it uh, quite similar and consistent between the two buildings. Mr. Goldsmith, what is that ratio of office? I think it's about 25% in both buildings of office to warehouse. 25% office, 75% mm -hmm. warehouse. Could you um, share with us what you were thinking was in putting uh, another warehouse in the Equinic Corporate Park? So the... Uh, the, the current uh, building that exists is under long-term lease to Avid Technologies. The additional building is used for my own business that I own with my wife. I uh, currently have uh, two businesses in Newport uh, and we currently rent uh, storage space for those businesses, uh, but we would move into the office space with uh, employees uh, of those businesses and then use part of the warehouse for shipping and receiving part of the warehouse for uh, display of uh, products, uh, and then the, other, the rest of it would be used for, for just inventory. Oh, okay, thank you. So there won't be any manufacturing going on? It's oh, no, no, no manufacturing at all. This is a business that uh, imports uh, furniture uh, and uh, and then sells wholesale. So there's there's nothing that's produced or even none of it's even manipulated or refurbished or anything on site. It, it's it's simply uh, imported and and resold. It's actually the same as what Avid does. Uh, actually, Avid imports all of their products uh, from Asia, uh, warehouses them and redistributes them. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions <coughs> for the applicant? I would uh, like to call uh, Mr. Hill. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Goldsmith. Well trained. 
Do you swear the testimony this evening would be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. State your name and address for the record. James Houle, uh, 198 Union Street, Portsmouth, Rhode Island. Thank you. You've appeared before us on many occasions, so we'll recognize you as an expert this thank evening. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Houle, if you want to... Um, oh. So, I'm sorry, but I didn't get to submit the report early, and Mr. Martlin has copies that I'd like to have you have so that you can follow along a little bit. We're going to mark it Exhibit C. Now, you've seen my reports in the past. You know they basically follow a standard outline. And in this particular case, this is, this is true. I've covered each of the standards for the special use permit that are being requested per uh, 902, Section 902. And, but I think there's two really point, there's two really important points that I want to go over. Um, Mr. Hartler has already referred to one, which is the diminution of value. I think he's referred to both of them, the comprehensive land use plan as well. But standard one, which is the proposal will not result in a significant diminution of property values in the surrounding area of the subject. If you can look at my report on page three, I have addressed that standard and I've included a photograph that I took standing in the parking area behind 72 Johnny Cake Hill Road. And you can see that I, I have you know, certainly not altered the photograph in any way, but you can see the the enormous distance between the most proximate residential uses, which are um, the only residential uses really that overlook the property or anywhere near the property, the rest of the uses around it are commercial. Um, and you can see in that photograph where the building would go and where the nearest houses are. You can see that there's really a lot of vegetative buffering that is between. And as Mr. Russell had said, the height is about 25 feet uh, higher now for the houses. Now if you look on the next page, on page four, the aerial photograph that I've included earmarks those same houses that are shown in the photograph. Then the containers that were marked in the previous photograph where the building will go. And you can see that surrounding those residential uses and within their entire vista are other commercial buildings. And there's really nothing in front of them that is not a very similar type commercial industrial building. And when you speak of diminution of value and you're only introducing one 15,000 square foot building in relationship to the size of these other buildings that are around there, you, this will not change the vista from those residential uses at all. So you're not increasing, you're not, there's no increase of of diminution of value, there's no increase to the impact, and because the the impact, frankly, is there. When they those houses were built, these were all pre-existing commercial uses. So those homes were all purchased with this the, this same view, that as I said, will really not be changed. This building will just appear to be an extension of the existing building at 72 Johnny K. Right, well you're addressing the potential diminution in value of the residences in the back, but, but you haven't addressed diminution in value of the other commercial properties in a Quidnick corporate park that could happen as a result of, of um, 
putting a very industrial building into a park that's designed for uh, corporate. And um, I can't remember if you were involved when we approved a special use permit for a, for the car garage. I was. But um, it had, um, which was a different use than co corporate office, and we had testimony as to the challenges of the office market and other ways to make appropriate use of this premier office park in, in Middletown. And we talked a great deal about distinguished architecture that made the car garage uh, special. But that is not the case here. So I wonder if you can address the potential diminution in value of the commercial properties in a Quinnick corporate park. Mr. Adler, I would ask, I, I'm, I'm not quite certain what you mean about the architectural standard or the difference, but could you just clarify that for me? I surely will. Are there any other buildings in a Quinnick corporate park that have a whole wall with no windows? I, I cannot answer that question. I don't, I don't know the answer to that question, but I can say that the um, issue of windows was addressed at great length at the planning board. And they were satisfied that um, the, the wall that did not have it would not create any type of an impact at all. And that was the general testimony that was being given specific to this building and its architectural design at planning board. You've asked a question about the impact to the commercial uses, to the other uses that are in the office park. I'm going to address a little bit later in the comprehensive land use plan how this is indeed a compatible use. But the truth of the matter is that there hasn't been a lot of new activity in the park for an extended period of time for the same reasons that we talked of when we were talking about the car garage. First of all, the car garage is a storage. It is a warehouse. That is the reason why they were requesting a special use permit. This is the same use. So it is very um, much um, compatible with the ongoing uses that are the most recent use is that, is, is the car garage which incidentally was very successful. But it brings any new construction, brings a, an energy to other uses in an area. When other buildings are constructed that are bringing new business in to the corporate park, uh, it, do, it definitely brings what I call a, a, an energy, a synergy, to uh, the rest of the properties that are there. Most of these properties have existed for 40 years. There's not been substantial changes. There's not been substantial upgrading. Now you're bringing a use in and you're actually starting to bring an energy level. You're bringing a business level in there that hasn't existed for a period of time. So in point of fact, I would, I would opine that this is actually increasing values of the neighboring properties. I don't see the design as, as um, any kind of a diminution. There, you also brought up the fact Can that I this, just, can yes. Can I interrupt you for just a moment? Um, now, you, you did take a site visit uh, of this property, and in fact, the, the rear of the existing Abbott building doesn't have any windows, isn't that right? Oh, yes, that's correct. And the, the side of the building facing the, the east doesn't have any windows either. Isn't that correct? I believe that is true. So you, you've got an existing building on site without windows on two facades and a very limited number of windows on the balance of it. Is that, that is correct. <coughs> and did you detect any diminution of value uh, in the neighborhood as a result of the, that? The, no, not at all. I... I, I is that? Yes. Okay. Well, let me ask you this.
this way then, in answering your question to me, Mr. Hull, can you envision any use of the property that um, would be a diminu diminution in value of Equinet Corporate Park? Is there any use that you can conceive that would be diminishing the value of adjoining commercial properties? Could I just ask, uh, yep. just to clarify for a moment? It, because I'm, I'm, I'm a bit confused, it, because on the one hand, you, the questions are relating to the look of the structure, and then this, this last question was related to use. Are we talking about the structure itself or, or the use? I'm really talking about the um, structure, um, I, I suppose. But um, yes, OK, I'm talking about how <coughs> this building looks, including what it's used for. And you're testifying, Mr. Hull is testifying that there is no diminution in the value of adjoining uh, uh, properties. And I'm positing, at least, that there, that a, a um, very, um, that a building that is designed and used for a purpose that is, um, I don't know, not a good one, could diminish the value of the properties beyond the residential properties up on Julia uh, Court. And I'm wanting to know if Mr. Hull feels what, um, that it's, that I want to know if he feels he hasn't testified that this building does not diminish the, the value of other properties within Equinet Corporate Park. I, I am thoroughly confused by the question, and it sounds, it, you know, it's a hypothetical. I mean, other they, uses aren't before this board. No, this, that, that's correct. I'd like this to use is, is what's being proposed. I, I suppose if it was, you know, some type of factory and you had, you know, fumes. all kinds of fumes, noise, dust, <laughs> vibration, you know, there'd be, there would be different things, but that's a hypothetical. We're here with this particular use. Okay, then let me ask Mr. Hull this question. Is there any other property, to your knowledge, in Equinet Corporate Park that has the um, appearance of the building as shown on A201, which looks pretty much like a um, garage? Well, I've, to be very honest with you, I can't name any off the top of my head again. I don't think that that was a question I was exactly prepared to answer. But I can say that most of the buildings, certainly from the 1980s, do not give off a very modern appearance. They, they're not architecturally modern in any level. Um, I think that even the pregs at the building right at 72 is a very standard industrial commercial type building. Um, and I think that it's very compatible to that building. I, I, I did want I, I did want to say two things. One is, I, I would not really like to conjecture on any kind of a, a hypothetical situation on what use might diminish value, because I, I don't think that's a fair question. Uh, as Mr. Marlin had said, the, the, the uh, proposal is for a very specific building and a very specific use. All right, I, 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 I would withdrawn that question. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't to, realize that you I'm not trying to give you a difficult time, Mr. Hu. You know I have enormous respect for your op opinions on these matters. <laughs> Thank you. But the second thing that I did want to talk about, which was the same thing that you alluded to and that I discussed at length during the car vault testimony, was that office use, which would it is a use that has really been very hurt by what has the current trends in the commercial market. I actually, two weeks ago, was called by someone who is just starting a business to buy up loans on office buildings because the banks 
are trying to get rid of their loans prior to the five or 10 year renewal of interest rates because they're so concerned that office buildings are going to become dinosaurs and that when the interest rate rises on the five year call, that what will end up happening is that people will abandon and, and the banks will end up holding them. It's actually a major uh, problem and trend. Uh, from Middletown, if you look at the comprehensive land use plan, the office park was designed to attract contractors that were going to be working with the military. And they, that doesn't happen now. Those are required to stay on base. And you don't have any of that type of action. So that this is the reason why some of these alternative type uses are going to, I believe, become more the standard than um, the, the, you know, they're gonna become the standard. That we're not gonna be replacing these with office buildings. We're not gonna be replacing them with, um, you know, anything similar to what was originally intended. The, the, the trends have changed. There's going to be um, many different kinds of uses. But I think that this type of storage use um, is really become very important. I, you know, we were here with redevelopment um, that are doing self-storage, the car vaults of storage. Um, you know, typically that's a, a use that has just become very important. And, and in this particular case, I see this as being very compatible with the existing building on site. And I can see no reason to think that the building of this building would reduce the value of any of the surrounding commercial properties. I really believe that it would, as I said, bring an energy level that will actually begin to increase value. And and just one thing, because I've heard it, but I want to just clarify it. It's been, test, it's been testified tonight that really you're only going to see this building if you pull behind the Avid building, correct? That is true. The, actually, the only people that actually see it are the people, the residential properties. Right, and that's the side that you've made the concessions on. That's I just right. wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Yes. More question? I, I'm Any other questions for Mr. Wu? On that particular issue, I did want to address the comp plan because okay. that was that was important. Um, creating nuisance in the neighborhood, I think that goes hand in hand with the first one. I don't believe it will. Um, number three will be compatible with the comprehensive land use plan. First, we find the language of the zoning code in the definition of office park. Office park is a district established to produce a park-like setting for office uses, certain industrial uses, and miscellaneous compatible uses. Now, we're aware that warehousing is a fully legal use in, in light industrial zones. It is an industrial use. Uh, this is one when they refer to the office park having certain industrial uses. I think, it's, I think that that satisfies that, but in addition, we're looking at miscellaneous compatible uses. And as I testified earlier, I think this building is very compatible with the existing building that's on site now. So I think that it really satisfies what the intention of the office park was in terms of the zoning code. But we also see in the comprehensive land use plan there is language dealing directly with office park. The Equidnick office park. The Equidnick corporate park was previously designated for industrial development of the future land use plan. However, the park zoned office park, which is a blending of the limit industrial and the office business zoning. And we see in that blending, again, that it's, it's taking directly half of it is a is light industrial use. And this is a fully legal by right use in the light industrial zone. It became a, an approved use with the um, special use permit when the two zones were blended 
but it is a legal use in this zone, and I think it's very compatible with the um, comprehensive, with the intention of the comprehensive land use plan. And lastly, we see that in um, uh, 912, we find that the protection of the community, the community character is the land, the comp plan calls for the additional commercial development should be discouraged in areas outside of existing building corridors. Any new commercial growth should continue to be infill development. And I think that that really speaks to this proposal because this is indeed infill development. So um, I think it, it's very much in uh, harmony with the comprehensive land use plan and the zoning code, which of course is a legislative arm. And then the other standards, the other two standards, which have to do with um, the, goodness, the granting of the special use permit will not be detrimental or the appropriate use. I think we've addressed that. And that the granting of the special use permit will not reduce in hazardous condition or conditions to inimical to public health. So I think that it satisfies all the requirements of the um, special use permit that's being requested. Further questions for Mr. Wu? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Mr. Goldsmith had a, uh, a couple of comments that he did want to make. Um, okay, come on up, Mr. Goldsmith. Prematurely cut him off. Uh, so uh, j j just a couple of things. Uh, number one, on the design side, uh, I, I would have happily uh, built a building that, uh, that matched the, uh, the AVID building that's directly in front of it. But the design standards don't allow for that any longer. So um, it, in terms of the neighbors, uh, I, I will say that it was quite amicable, um, even with the, the neighbors who um, who objected to the building, and uh, I, I will say that we agreed to every single change that they wanted to the building, we agreed to, uh, and that's why they uh, withdrew the objection. Uh, so we were happy to uh, accommodate uh, the, the changes that they wanted, even, even though it increased the cost. Um, as to the, the office market, um, you know, it just, Elaborating on what Mr. Hool said, I, I think you know we all know what's happening uh, with the office market. But you know, as of last week, the city with the greatest office occupancy in this country is New York, and it's at 50 percent. So uh, that will tell you something about the demand for office space, and uh, even more about the uh, uh, the building of new office space. I, you know, I, you know, I don't see any new new capacity in office space being needed. Uh, not in the near future at all. It, as an anecdote to that, if you look at AVID, for instance, AVID is a 20,000 square foot building, uh, and about 25% of that 5,000 square feet is office. The number of people occupying the office today in AVID is zero. They have 5,000 square feet of office, there is zero people working there in the office. There are two people working in that warehouse driving forklift trucks. 20,000 square feet, two employees. That's it. What we're proposing here is a local business employing local people. We employ mostly young people, and these are mostly Newport and Middletown residents who are able to stay here and work here in entry-level jobs. They're mostly, these are all 20-something year olds who are working there. So, you know, we think it's additive to what's happening uh, in the industrial park um, because at the end of the day, uh, office space, uh, even though there might be lots of office buildings there, um, I'm not sure what the occupancy is. I only know what's happening at AVID because I, I own the building, but there's no one occupying the office space. Everyone there re works remotely. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, I don't have any uh, further witnesses. Let me open it up to the public. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to either speak for or against the petition at 72 John Clark Road? Johnny Cake? Yeah. Johnny Cake Road. 
They could have named them different. Seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing and ask for a motion to accept the petition as presented. I'll make a motion to accept the position, uh, petition as presented in accordance with the positive recommendation from the planning board, which had six recommendations for conditions of approval that must be met and nine waivers, which must be addressed as part of this recommendation of approval. Do I have a second? Second, or I can't. Oh, I second, sorry. Thanks, Judith. <laughs> Discussion? Well, <coughs> Mr. Marlin, your, your, um, uh, witnesses made a, a more challenging um, decision for for me as I said I I I did my own field trip and looked at this carefully and had a great deal of concerns and I was hoping tonight would um, alleviate those concerns um, Lord knows I have great respect for uh, Herc works and Dan Herc he designed my own house and um, I always have um, great respect for um, Mr. Hool. And I am sure that his testimony and, and that of Mr. Goldsmith is correct, that there is no current market to build office space. I, I know that. Um, I was a real estate lawyer. I, I know that and understand it. But I'm trying to think back to the reason why this office park was uh, built um, in large part due to the work of Mr. Silva, Mr. Martland's partner and the person who testified right before here after the Navy left. We wanted to build an office park. And I understand that right now there is no market for it, but buildings are lo very long term in their duration and maybe someday there will be a recovery of the office market, but then we won't be able to put one there because we will have had this different kind of storage building um, put there. I really do believe that it um, is going to um, diminish the value long-term of Quidnick uh, Corporate Park. Mr. Hull, I think they gave you a challenging assignment on this one. And um, I, d I was, I do understand the comp uh, plan. I appreciate that the, co the office park being combination light industrial. I guess this constitutes light and in light industrial in a way. So I won't interpose an argument there. But I, I have not been um, persuaded that this is a positive development for the corporate park or for Middletown. So I'm going to vote no, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to vote in favor of, of the petition uh, pretty much for the opposite contention as, as my fellow uh, panel mate here. I do think, particularly with the compatibility issue that Mr. Hartler is having to wrestle with here, I do think that you have done diligence and shown from the language of the comprehensive plan that it does meet both conditions of the office park and also uh, light industrial. So I think that that is one clear area that really makes me want to, uh, to support this. The other is relocating businesses back into an area where we have designed specifically to encourage business growth. Now we may argue about whether or not this meets or doesn't meet some of the comprehensive plan, but I don't think we can argue that we are bringing business back to Middletown and it's going to be beneficial to local residents here on the island. And I can't not support that, particularly in this day and age. And I applaud the Goldsmiths for doing this. So I am going to support this plan. This petition, excuse me. Yeah, uh, I, I'm not convinced that um, this building satisfies the design standards of um, 521.2.C. Um, the architectural elements, you know, the board and batten and the asphalt sloping roof and the windows. Um, 
I don't know, it gives me pause. Um, I do appreciate that it, this will bring in business to that area. Um, I'm wrestling with the fact that um, it might lower the value of the surrounding area, including what's already in the office park. Um, I'm struggling with this one, but I'm going to vote yes. Having had an office in the office park in one that abuts residential area 27 Jacome Way, the back of that building is a steel box that faces the neighbors to the east and it's a two-story steel box with no windows on one and a half of the sides. And uh, I think one of the hardest things we have is the architectural design element. Because if you look at the evolution of the office park, it starts with modern, modern, then it goes into slightly different. I remember when Child and Family Services was being built and the uproar was, it looked too much like a house and why are we building this? Uh, all that aside, I, th I think that the petitioner has done as good as you can with a 15,000 square foot office slash warehouse, uh, you know, to meet the design space. There's no mechanicals on the roof. I, I think I think they've done a, a, a fair job. So I too am going to support it. I think it meets the comprehensive plan, and I think it meets the criteria for the special use permit. So all those in favor. Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Motion carries three to zero. Three to one. Three to one, I'm sorry. No, two, yeah, three to one. These numbers are bad. I'm so used to five. So we are going to take a, a recess while we wait for Mr. Curtin. Uh,
Mr. Heaney, if you can read the next petition. Petition of Andrew and Julie Nicoletti, owners, for a variance from Section 603, District Dimensional Regulation to construct a 19-foot by 12-foot, 8-inch, two-story addition with a side yard setback of 8 feet, 6 inches, or 15 feet, and a front yard setback of 15 feet, 5 inches, where a 25-foot setback is required. Lot coverage would increase from 29% to 33%. Said real estate is located at 7 South Press Street and further identified as Lot 52 on Tax Assessor's Plat 116 Southeast. Raise your right hands. Do you swear the testimony this evening to be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. State your name and address for the record. One of you can do it. <laughs> Andrew and Julie Nicoletti, 7 South Crest Street, Middletown, Rhode Island. Thank you. Tell us about your petition. Yes, thank you very much for taking the time to listen to us tonight. Um, what we'd like to do is um, build a 19 by 12 foot 8 office um, onto our current property. Um, ever since the pandemic, we found ourselves working from home a lot more often than we did before. And um, when we're blessed to have both our daughters with us and they're working at home, we're all at the kitchen table. <laughs> so we'd like to take the opportunity to expand um, the existing space and make an office so that we can separate a bit and, um, and work from home. Have you talked to your neighbors about it? We have. And what was, what was their opinion? Um, supportive. Hmm. You live in a, in a very difficult area to build on very small lots, so. Yes, yep, we, um, we were, I think this is about as much as we're gonna be able to do without building into the street. How many square feet is your current lot? So the current lot, I believe, is 8,000 square feet. Right. <clears throat> Any questions for the petitioner? Well, I see you're doing a, you've got kind of a rectangle, a house as it exists, but then there's a corner that is cut off, if you will, and you're building in that space there and just pushing out. That's right. Yeah. That. Okay. Yes, that's exactly correct. Any other questions for the petitioner? Mm, I think so. I think it's pretty straight. Let me see if anyone in the audience wants to speak for or against your petition. So you can sit down. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone here that would like to speak either for or against it? Seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing. Uh, can, I have a can I have a motion to accept the petition as presented? I'll make a motion to uh, accept it as presented. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second. Discussion? Based on the, the current footprint and the size of the lot that they're already on, being surrounded on three sides by neighbors, this is probably the only direction they could go in and not really encroach one of their neighbors. They're actually going more towards the street and away from everybody. So I can understand why the neighbors aren't objecting. And I think this is the least relief necessary for them to do it. it, it you know, have some uh, further enjoyment of their home so they'll have some office space rather than having to do business at the kitchen table Although that's not a bad thing, the whole family together. I can, I'm going to support. I concur with Mr. Heaney. I think, uh, first off, that lease release is going away, right, Mr. Monte? Yes, after, the, after the first of the year, lease release necessary is leaving our lexicon. That's correct. Uh, but I think I think when you look at the plan that the petitioner's uh, proposing, it's a very modest increase, and I don't think because of the nature of the lot uh, that you're going to beat the uh, the lot coverage. So I, you know, where it says it's 33%, it's already 20% 20, 20 smaller than it should be by zoning. So I, too, am going to support it. Any other discussion? I am going to support it. Um, 
I think that there is a hardship because of the size of the lot. Um, I think it is the least relief necessary. I don't think it's a hardship, um, or I don't think it's the hardship is the result of any prior action, and it's not for financial gain, it's for your family. Um, and I don't think it's going to alter the character of the surrounding area, so I'm going to vote for it. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries 4 0. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, my office is excused on the next matter. Okay. If I may be excused. You may be excused, Mr. Monty. Have a wonderful night. Mr. Bean. Petition of 4H VRM LLC, Richard N. Sayer, owner, Jason Gould, Gold, excuse me, applicant, Christopher J. Bean, attorney, for a special use from section 602 and 902 to construct a new retail package store building and vote on PBR recommendations. Said real estate is located at 48 Valley Road and further identified as lot 103B on tax assessor's plat 107 Southeast. Good evening, uh, members of the board. Uh, last but not least, um, I think this is a pretty straightforward petition. I hope you find it to be also. Um, my client's looking uh, on a vacant lot that he's to uh, under contract to purchase. Uh, he wants to uh, construct a new building that would basically house uh, a package store. So it would be a retail use with a uh, package store uh, for a package store. Um, he presently operates a store at 1375 West Main Road in Middletown. He's been doing that for nine years, so you have an experienced operator that is only going to move his current locations to this location and will be looking to have the town council also to approve the actual transfer of the, of the Class A license to this location. So, um, this matter, of course, has been before the planning board for development plan review. Uh, there are um, recommendations uh, made uh, in terms of conditions and also waivers. Uh, I think that the planning board did uh, agree to recommend approval of these plans. They did it by unanimous vote. They seem to be excited about the design of the building. So. Uh, hopefully you are too. Uh, I have four witnesses, hope to move through them pretty quick. Okay. Um, so uh, my first witness would be Jason Gold. Hello. Raise your right hand. Nope. Uh, did you Sorry. swear to testimony this night will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do, yes. State your name and address for the record. Jason Gold, 2 Laurel Lane, Jamestown, Rhode Island. Okay. So Jason, you want to construct a new building that is correct, yes. And you're presently under contract with the owner to purchase this conditional on you receiving uh, the relief from the zoning board and authority from the town council to transfer the license. That is correct, yes. And so when you, if this goes through, you are going to be the owner of the property and also the business that you're operating. Yes, I'll be the owner operator. And you're presently operating a package store at, what is it? 1375 West Main Road, is that right? 1374 West Main Road. And you've been doing that just under nine uh, years. Right about right? nine years, yes. Okay. Now, um, can you just tell the board uh, why you're uh, planning to uh, move, construct this building, and so forth? Sure, two main reasons. Uh, the biggest reason to me is being able to own my own property. It's been a dream of mine ever since I opened the business. Father, who's here right now, had a, a couple local businesses actually in Middletown, and he never got to own the property. And I saw 
you know, how hard he worked and what he had at the end of the day. So to me, owning your own business, excuse me, owning your own business and property is the most important thing that you can do. Secondly, uh, the store is very cramped for space right now. We've grown tremendously uh, while, you know, we were operating it over the last eight years and the space right now just does not fit the amount of business that we're actually doing. Now, uh, you also, this uh, present location is going to require you to put some significant capital into uh, yes. fix up the present premises, is that right? It, it will, yes. And you don't want to do that to a place that you're only leasing? That is correct. There's absolutely no return on investment in putting racking and shelving and storage in something I don't own. So the original uh, petition that we filed talked about having a second floor with o office use up there. I had originally did, but we've since you cut that. Yeah. You compressed it down. Yes. It's only going to have the retail package store use. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes, One sir. One floor. Is that right? Yes. Okay. That is correct. Now, you, uh, as I suggested uh, in my opening remarks, uh, uh, these plans went through development plan review with the planning board. Is that correct? They did. Yes. Uh, they approved it seven zero, and I believe there were. Uh, several positive comments about the way the business is actually operated now from the planning board. And you're not, uh, you don't need any other further zoning relief, is that correct? That is correct. It's just a special use permit because it is a, although it's retail, uh, it's a package store use which would require a special use permit, is that right? That is correct, yes. All right, let me get to your operations. Um, with the uh, plans uh, that are before the board, uh, the architect has submitted That is correct, yes. So that will show you do have a small office, but that's for your own operations. Is that correct? Yes. Legally, we have to keep uh, all the uh, invoices uh, on site, also for accounting purposes as well. Now, and then you have the retail area, you have coolers in there, and also storage. That is correct, yes. Now, are you a Currently right now, Monday through Wednesday, we're open 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. We close an hour before we even need to. There's just really, nothing really good happens after 9 p.m. at a liquor store. So uh, Thursday through Saturday, we are open from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. And then Sunday, uh, we're open the legal amount of time, which is 10 to 6. But those are standard operating hours and days for most liquor stores throughout the state, is that correct? That is correct. There are some exceptions, but most uh, have those uh, days and hours. Right? We're actually open less than we can. There's an exception in, this, in Middletown to be open to 11 o'clock Friday and Saturday night. We have never taken advantage of that, and we close an hour early uh, Monday through Wednesday. All right. In terms of uh, the site itself, you're providing 20 parking spaces, is that correct? That is correct. Uh, now, Although you're, you're providing these parking spaces, the dynamics of how you sell to the public have been changing significantly over the years. Is that correct? That is also correct. Um, and can you tell us, describe what's happening? Close to a third of our business is now delivery. Um, we, out, we operate outside of our primary market area. Uh, in the plans, hopefully you can see them in front of you, there's a loading area. We have several delivery drivers uh, that will go out and make deliveries, some of them to large events, and some of them, I don't know if you're on Drizzly or go on our website, but you can order a couple six packs and we'll bring them to you. So um, that's going to reduce the coming and going to your store by the customers, is that correct? That is correct, yes. And you have a significant business that you provide to caterers, is that correct? That is also correct. The, under Rhode Island law, uh, caterers have to purchase their alcohol for events from at retail, is that right? From a Class A liquor license, yes. Uh, how many employees are you going to have at the site? We currently have uh, about 12 to 14, depending on seasonality. Obviously, we're significantly busier in the summertime than the winter. Uh, we will probably increase by at least four or five employees full time. Uh, we're obviously very hopeful that with a larger, nicer store, we'll capture some more of, uh, you know, we'll capture more customers. 
Uh, we also hope to expand our delivery business as well. That is correct. And how many uh, deliveries do we expect per uh, week? With this new store, one of the challenges that we have is space, or excuse me, with my old store, one of the challenges that we have is space. This will actually significantly reduce deliveries to my store because we'll be able to fit significantly more product inside of it and not have to wait to sell through throughout the week. Uh, so to answer your question, Chris, sorry, uh, I would say maybe Five at the most. You have, uh, and they, you designed some uh, uh, places in the on site for a loading dock and that for these trucks to pull up and unload. That is correct. We've got all the dimensions uh, for the trucks themselves, and we made sure, uh, Dan and I went over this numerous times, uh, how large to make the loading areas so they could fit in very easily. Questions for Mr. Gold? Good. Yes. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Dan, you're still under oath, so I don't have to swear you in here. Thank you. And so, uh, Dan, you uh, prepared the uh, elevations and floor plan for the uh, building, is that correct? Yes. And this is new construction, is that right? That's correct. So, with new construction, it has to with all existing uh, life safety codes, uh, building codes, or any code that affects the public health, safety, and welfare? Correct, yes, uh, full compliance. Uh, so the square footage of this building is going to be what? It is going to be doing some math here. Looks like around 7,000. 6,700. 6, <laughs> Round it up. Uh, this was a pretty easy one because uh, Jason was up for whatever look the town would be happy with, so we just complied with all of the design standards and just kind of used that as our, um, as our uh, reasons for the look of the exterior um, to be compliant with all of the design standards. So there was one a waiver uh, that we uh, asked the planning board to approve concerning the area of building materials. Correct. Yeah, we got the uh, typical uh, request for synthetic materials. So they're going to look traditional, but they're going to be made out of uh, um, boral, fly ash, or PVC composite products. Well, this went uh, on the planning board early on for a conceptual plan. That's correct. And yes. Then through full blown development plan review. Yes. Yes, this was the uh, easiest of all the ones I've had so far. <laughs> Thanks. Any questions for Dan? Thank Thanks, you. Dan. Mr. Russell, you're still under oath. That is correct. The only relief that uh, ends on the zoning board is a special use permit for the liquor retail sales. That's correct. All other dimensional regulations are complied with. That's correct. And the present conditions is a, a vacant lot, is that right? That's right. Have no construction on the site? That's correct, yes. Yes, that is correct. And, uh, <coughs> the board had before it the decision, uh, positive uh, recommendation uh, by the planning board. Right? Yes, I believe so. So that's correct. <laughs> it also uh, had to be reviewed by the Rhode Island Department of Transportation. Yes, that is correct for a physical alteration permit application. So 
most certainly. The, uh, as far as Rhode Island DOT is concerned, uh, required a fiscal alteration permit as Valley Road is a state road. Uh, in that, or within that application, uh, we propose a new curb cut on the north side of the property, uh, closest to the office building that formerly uh, housed Santander Bank. Uh, and the change in use going from a vacant lot to uh, uh, an active uh, facility uh, required a review for alterations or impacts to the state right-of-way, which include traffic uh, and stormwater primarily. So the uh, traffic, uh, the additional uh, was required to uh, engage in traffic engineering traffic study, is that correct? That's correct, because it's a, it's a new use on a vacant piece of land abutting a state road, uh, DOT wanted a, a traffic impact statement or study assessment uh, as part of that application submission. Uh, part of your uh, site work and services uh, is to go to that uh, study, is that correct? That's correct. And uh, can you just provide a quick summary of it? So certainly. So the, the report, which is pretty pretty standard uh, report that's submitted with these types of applications, uh, assesses the use, uh, trip generation, traffic, His historical data, accident data, uh, et cetera, and you know, in conclusion, they deem that this use would not create any uh, detrimental effects on the on the state road or surrounding areas, uh, and was uh, 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 you know an acceptable at an acceptable scale uh, for the uh, for the development. And that is. So a little, little history, a little backstory on that. So the original curb cut location was actually on the south side uh, nearest the DMV. The DMV's driveway, uh, uh, for those of you that are familiar, or their, their exit lane is very close to that property line, uh, and it has a, it has a curve to it. So all the DOT really requires for a commercial application is a 10-foot edge clearance, which is another way of saying setback to the property line. For practical purposes, those driveways were a little, yes, they were on top of each other. So in, in reconsidering that, and it was actually brought up by the, the planning boards consultant, we moved it to the opposite side where there was greater separation to the abutting uh, driveways there. So it's, we feel that it's for a much better uh, design. The property is very uniform in shape. It's very uniform in profile. So making that change was a very simple thing to do. You just flipped it about its center, and <coughs> there you have it. And that's shown on the actual site plan. That's, right? that's correct. And you've already done that? Yes, we have. So it's shown uh, that way. That's correct. That, that's correct. So this also required an application to DEM for stormwater. That was reviewed and approved and, and uh, uh, submitted to the planning department uh, prior to the development plan review. probably best that, that Dan answered that, um, but uh, I believe the intent was to certainly to, to shield the mechanical, the rooftop mechanicals from public view.
questions for Mr. Russell? I think we're good. All right, thank you. Mr. Hooley, you're still under oath, and we know where you live. Thank you. But don't. Just to be in? Perhaps you. So you engage by phone. And so, Mr. Hooley, I apologize for submitting this. We'll mark it Exhibit A. Thank you. That's correct. That's right. I, um, you know, like taking a quick look at the code, this is um, in the LB zone, a package to liquor store requires a special use permit. Um, so we look at the five standards for the special use permit. They, as um, Mr. Russell had already testified, there's no dimensional relief requested. There's no variance of any sort requested. So the first thing we did was look at the plans um, included in the report, and I think you already have copies of them. Um, there's a proposed site plan and a, and a planting plan on page three. I think the planting plan is um, important when I address the first uh, item, which is that it will not create a significant diminution of property values in the neighborhood or in the district. Uh, this is a um, compatible use with all the uses that are in the area. Uh, again, if you look at page five on my report, I have an aerial view of this, where the subject lot is located. You can see that all around it are commercial properties. The nearest uh, non-commercial property uh, are the residential properties that are buffered by the row of commercial properties on the other side of uh, Valley Road from the subject, that the buildings are all very much in harmony, the use is very much in harmony, um, and so I didn't see anything that would create any type of a uh, negative impact uh, in, the, in the area. I did look to see uh, how close it was to anything resembling a public building. To, I know it's close to Town Hall. Um, and really, every one of the uses that you would consider public, um, houses of worship, anything along that line, are really not, they're distant from the subject property and they are um, really in different neighborhoods. Um, I didn't see that it would create any kind of a nuisance for the same reason, it's such a compatible use. Uh, compatibility with the comprehensive land use plan, um, same as I testified earlier, uh, the comp plan calls for commercial development not to sprawl but to be infill. This is a perfect infill lot on Valley Road. Uh, it really conforms to every part of the comprehensive land use plan. Um, there's no detrimental, uh, inappropriate, uh, that it's not going to injure any of the appropriate uses in the neighborhood, um, and that the granting will not result in any hazardous conditions. Uh, and I believe that's to be true. I don't know if there were any um, specific questions anybody had, but I really think that this is a, you know, a perfect example of a retail building um, that is a use that's very compatible with the neighborhood. Um, I don't see any detrimental conditions, so I think it really satisfies all the conditions of the special use permit. Planning board also in its findings found that the on the That's correct. Any 
questions for Mr. Wolf? Yep. <coughs> on the conditions of saying what conditions and what conditions. So, for lack of a better term, a shield of the mechanical systems on top of the building. That's correct, yes. And you incorporated that in your plan? Yes, and those are the drawings you have. They show a roof screen, which is actually roof shingles, so it appears like the roof just continues up, but it's actually a screen for the mechanical units. Thank you, Dan. I have nothing further. At this point, I'll ask the public if there's anyone that would like to speak either for or against the petition. Being none, I'm gonna close the public hearing. Can I have a motion to accept the special use permit as presented, contingent with the planning board recommendations? I'll make that motion. A by Judith. I'll second. Second by Tom Heaney. Discussion? I'm gonna vote in favor of it. I think it all meets all five criteria of the special use permit. In particular, I'm particularly uh, impressed with the quality of the architecture. I think it's a, uh, um, a real attribute to the street. Further discussion? Can't add to perfection. I too am gonna uh, vote with it. I know that lot's been empty for, well, I've lived in Middletown 30, 35 years now, and I think it's been empty the entire time. So I think it's a great, as, as Mr. Hull testified, it's a great infill. It's a lot that's been sitting there. And so I think it's a great use. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 4-0. Thank you very much. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Second. Second. We are done.